Hey guys, it's Joe here from Red Phoenix Rises, and we are nearly done with our series on Innuendo Studios. Hopefully it'll be done this video or next. Let's get to it. Cruelty against the left is framed as necessary and righteous. From any other perspective, posting someone's bank information is something you might feel ashamed of. Are you actually going to act like the left has some moral high ground on doxing? Because that's frankly just ridiculous. You don't. The left has been doxing people, reporting their online behavior to their employers, even getting people kicked out of banks, if you want a very specific example. So to act like this is somehow a right-wing behavior or even an all-right behavior, no, this is just people into politics, some of them really like to cause chaos. That happens on all sides. Although I'm going to argue that when your side does it, it's the most damaging because you generally have the social power to actually cost people their jobs and their bank accounts and their livelihoods. Which creates a psychological imperative not to consider other perspectives. A thing that keeps people in is staving off the guilt they will reckon with the moment they step out. Gabe is also aware that anything he's done to the left could be done to him if he leaves. Some communities even keep docs on their members as insurance. Which ones exactly, because the only community I'm aware of that's ever done that was some furry discord. I'm sure they exist, but is this a common practice? And the things he's encouraged to do to the left will likely make him feel that the left would never take him now. The radical right is the only home he's got. Or he could just join any conservative group. Don't have to be a radical. And also it's true, the left doesn't really take anybody unless they go full-on lefty. You can't be someone who is interested in what the left has to say. You either have to be a full-on progressive, or you are not welcome. Harassment becomes another tool of isolation. Steadily, options for Gabe are whittled down to being a vigilante or a nihilist. You forgot about the option of becoming a nihilistic vigilante. There are periods of elation, moments the alt-right feels it's winning, or more accurately, the people they hate are losing, are like cocaine. They are authoritarians, after all. But the times in between are mean and angry. They are antisocial, starved of emotional connection, consuming incompatible conspiracies that may at any point run them afoul of one another, devoted to figureheads who cater to but cannot risk leading them, and living under constant threat of being outed to the left or turned on by the right for stepping out of line. Dude, the, the right wants nothing to do with these people. We're not like, oh, it's, it's okay, there's this group of white supremacists, but as long as they don't kill any niggers. No, we're like, hey, we, can, we, can we get rid of these guys? We want them gone. And so we kicked them out, like, the second we figured out who they were. It wasn't that hard. In fact, the only members of these groups who are accepted on the right are people who pretend to be right-wingers, but then, you know, come out of the closet as alt-right, and then we're like, oh, you were one of those people. Get the fuck out of here. We actually have a pretty significant zero-tolerance policy for these people. That's probably why they hate us so much, to be honest. Hell, I see the Groypers rail against conservative ink more often than I see them rail against the left. What does that tell you? Gabe took this journey for the sense of community and purpose. And but for the rare moments everything goes their way, the alt-right can't maintain either. They can only keep promising his day will come, a story he could get from a $5 palm reading. The feeling there's nothing left but to kill yourself or someone else is so common, it's a meme. But there is a third option. Gabe can leave. Pre-conclusion, for fuck's sake do not make Gabe your whole ass praxis. Before we continue, I want to state plainly that Gabe went off the deep end because he found a community willing to tell him that because he is a cishet white man, the world revolves around him. Do not treat him like this is true. If a fraction of the energy spent having debates with America's Gabes were spent instead on voter reenfranchisement, prisoners' rights, protections for immigrants, statehood for DC, and redistricting, Gabe's opinions, in the societal sense, wouldn't matter. See, this is why you people are dangerous. You're talking about voter enfranchisement while also talking about disenfranchising this one guy because you don't like what he has to say. Have you realized yet that you are also an authoritarian? That you literally want to shut this guy out because he doesn't agree with you. Like, it's one thing to not agree with him, to not invite him to your parties. It's another thing to say, hey, we're going to make you worth dirt because you are wrong. 
Let's just make society forget that you exist. Make you meaningless. Why not just try to convince him? Is he still not a person? Can Are people really incapable of having their minds changed, of being corrected? No, and instead we just have to say, well, you're wrong, so we're, we're throwing you in the dirt and we're burying you. And look, here's where I disagree with the alt-right, is I know the alt-right and their descendants would do the exact same thing to you, and to me for that matter. But you're a lot like them. And here I am saying maybe we should let everyone have a voice and just hope that, I don't know, the bad ideas don't become incredibly popular. Maybe you beat authoritarianism by not being authoritarian, instead of building the exact same thing they want, but for your side. Reactionary conservatism is a small and largely unpopular ideology that is only so represented in our culture and politics because they've learned how to game the system. And I get it. Those are huge problems that are going to take years to address, where if you know a Gabe, that's a conversation you could have today. And if you think you can get through to him, it's worthwhile to try. This is a fight on many fronts, and de-radicalization is one of them. But it is only one. So please keep it in perspective. Yeah, look, if we just excommunicate the Gabes, except for maybe the ones that we think we might be able to convince, but we should excommunicate the rest of them, then we can build our utopia. Also, you really need to stop conflating conservatism and the alt-right. You do it all the fucking time. It sends an awful message when we spend more time trying to get bigots back on our side than we do the people they are bigoted against. Your value as a lefty does not hinge on whether you can change Gabe's mind. Conclusion. How Gabe gets out. He may just grow out of it. These communities skew young, and some folks hit a point where hanging out with edgy teens doesn't feel cool anymore. He may become disillusioned after the movement fails to deliver on its many promises. He may become disillusioned if something goes wrong in his life and his community isn't there for him. If he feels they like his race and his gender, but don't actually care about him. He may be shocked if he sees the alt-right at its worst before being appropriately conditioned. Charlottesville was a step too far for a lot of people. His community may turn on him for any perceived unorthodoxy, and he may leave out of necessity. Man, you gotta love how right horseshoe theory is sometimes. I mean, no one has ever been kicked out of the left for perceived unorthodoxy. He may be separated by circumstance from the community, a trip with no internet, hospitalization, arrest, and not be able to top up on the rhetoric. This may lead him to question his beliefs. His community may disappear, either tearing itself apart or getting shut down by authorities. He may have incidental contact with populations he is supposed to hate, and have trouble reconciling who they are in person with what he's been told about them. In his community, people bond over shared intolerance, but suddenly, being tolerant helps him make friends. This is one reason the alt-right has made a battleground of the liberal arts college campus. Milo Yiannopoulos is not particularly bright. Alt-right, on the other hand, that's a stretch. But then again, you did accuse a room full of Jews of being neo-Nazis, so what can I really say at that point? He may form or revisit relationships outside the network, people who can offer him the connection he's been looking for. This may reintroduce outside perspectives, but more importantly, it rekindles his ability to have healthy relationships at all, something the alt-right has estranged him from. As with recruiters, it seems these escape hatch relationships can sometimes be parasocial, coming to respect a public figure who is on the left or is critical of the alt-right. Someone he is close to may compel him to choose, me or the movement. A lot of young men leave to save a romantic relationship. Yeah, there's definitely no liberal practice of shunning whatsoever. You know what's weird? My wife started out as a Bernie Sanders supporter, and I never threatened to leave her if she didn't change her mind. Mind you, I think Bernie Sanders is far more dangerous than the alt-right is nowadays. I just think the fact that you don't see the authoritarianism that you espouse as a good thing, oh, it's okay if we're terrible to these people because they're wrong. You, you don't even see it. You people really are everything you claim to hate. Hearing stories from people who've already jumped may help. There aren't a lot of public formers, and some raise questions as to their sincerity. So you, once again, if you don't adopt the entire progressive dogma, you aren't really welcome. Mind you, I have no clue who this guy is, so... But it is getting more common, and maybe the closest we get to exit counseling for the alt-right. 
he may become aware of the ways he's being manipulated, or have them revealed to him, maybe because he stumbled into BreadTube, I don't know. Yeah, when I stumbled into BreadTube, I just thought, wow, this is what an internet cult looks like. Uh, lots of big words and confusing sentences that actually don't mean much and are generally factually incorrect. But it, much like your abhorrent alt-right, tends to say things in such a way that it sounds like you understand what you're talking about, and so people just kind of believe you. Knowledge that you are being indoctrinated is no guarantee it won't work. You are not immune to propaganda. But it can help one resist. And he may revisit a core belief system that used to guide him, be it religion or social justice, or a really wholesome fandom, and be reminded of the identity he used to have. Moments like these, in isolation or in aggregate, can inspire Gabe to jump. They are also good times for friends to intervene. The reach and the impunity that comes with the internet means it has never been easier to fall into reactionary conservatism. It has also never been easier to get out. People who exit skinhead gangs often fear for their lives. For Gabe, there's a chance getting out is as simple as going to a different website. Much of his community does not know his name or his face, and he may not be important enough to dox. What doesn't get Gabe out, not reliably, not that I have seen, is an argument with a stranger who proves all his facts wrong and his ideology bunk. Well, I know that's not a first-hand account. So which one of your lefty friends actually did have an argument where he proved all of the alt-right's facts wrong? Facts don't always work because facts don't care about his feelings. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you just quote a neo-Nazi Jew? What is wrong with you? This was about staying in a community and holding on to an identity that mattered to him. It was about belonging. And that is something a rando from the other side of the culture war can't give him and probably shouldn't be responsible for. The theme here is human connection. Yeah, make sure that you form real human bonds with people after you bury them because they were wrong once. Before he can do the work of disentangling himself and facing the guilt of what he's believed and maybe done, he has to know there's something for him on the other end of it. That the right hasn't ruined him. They've told him all of history is groups fighting each other over status and that without his clan he'll be in exile. He needs a better story. I don't know that lefty spaces are ideal for this, in no small part because bringing someone who's a bit of a Nazi but working on it into diverse communities is questionable. And it probably wouldn't be good for him either. Having just gotten out of a toxic belief system, he's going to be deeply skeptical of all ideologies. I imagine that holds especially true for the toxic ones. In a perfect world, people who care about Gabe could build for him, to use a therapy term, a holding space. Someplace private, physical or digital, where Gabe can work out his feelings, where he is both encouraged and expected to be better, but is not, in the moment, judged. That comes later. It is delicate and time-consuming work that should not be done in public, but we find these beliefs, built up over the course of months or years, tend to fall away very quickly with a shift of environment. Change Gabe's surroundings and you change Gabe. But instead, a lot of people who jump are functionally deprogramming themselves, which is working for a lot of them, but it's haphazard. And there are recidivists. If you don't personally know a Gabe or have training as a counselor, you may not be in a position to help him. Possibly there are things you can do to disrupt the recruitment process or prevent infiltration of spaces you're in. I'm looking into it, but talk to your mods. But... Elephant in the room, meaningful change will require reform on the part of platform holders. Tools to disrupt this process already exist and are being used on groups like ISIS, but they're not being used on the alt-right because they try oh so hard not to get classified as terrorists. I mean, let's see. ISIS has thousands killed, an attempt at overthrow of a couple of governments, and a massive terrorist network that goes on shooting sprees. The alt-right has... One guy who killed a lady with his car. I see why one is considered a terrorist organization and the other is a political movement. And that's not a defense of them. That's just saying this is a retarded comparison. And also any functioning anti-radicalization policy would require banning a lot of conservative politicians. By a lot, you mean two. One of whom has already been censured. Also, again, you're missing your own authoritarian streak here, where you just want to ban things that you disagree with. So there's that. 
But what makes our story better than theirs is that the fight for social and economic justice, though it is long and difficult and frustrating, when it works, it fulfills the promise the right can't keep. It materially makes people's lives better. I am not prone to sentimentality or to giving these videos happy endings, but one thing we have that the alt-right doesn't is hope. All right, so for one, hope doesn't mean that you're correct. Two, are you referencing the end of The Last Jedi? Because that would be retarded. Shockingly enough, hope doesn't actually build an army. It doesn't actually win a war. And it doesn't actually make you a successful politician. But I guess as long as you're hopeful that your authoritarian dictatorship can be assembled without you getting killed by it, have at it.